What's up guys, JR Raymond back again, coming to you from Plawmore Lanes here at the Coldwater event in Coldwater, Ohio. Today we're gonna do an exclusive interview and follow around with Ryan Simonelli. We're gonna talk to him a little bit before the squad. We just got done bowling A squad and B squad. B squad pretty much ran them over. B squad had like 18 guys that were 100 over. So it's looking like that cut's gonna be right around that 100 uh, to 110 range. So that's going to be the number going forward. Uh, A squad had about six guys that got to 100 over or better. So we'll see what happens here in C squad. Traditionally, C squad's a little bit lower scoring squad, but we'll see what happens here. But first, we're going to talk to Ryan, see what his game plan is, and see what we got to do from there. All right, welcome back, guys. I'm here with Ryan Simonelli. We're going to try and figure out what exactly he's got going on for C squad. Scores were a little bit higher in B squad compared to A squad. Mm -hmm. Ryan, what are you seeing out there? What's your plan? Yeah, honestly, the first to second block on the left side, they looked a little more blended on the second block, so I'm, I'm hoping that they stay that way. Uh, the cliff on the first block seemed to get them in trouble a little bit way out there on one and two. The goal um, is definitely to stay with my real shallow angles, high ball speed, and just kind of trapped the lane in front of me. Um, I got purple hammers, black hammers, and I drilled a true motion from Brunswick as well to give me three different uh, urethane options because the goal is to stay in urethane the whole block. Do you uh, do you use any trick layouts or anything special on those types of urethane balls? Not on urethane balls, no. We, we just stay pretty basic, about five inch pins, and, and uh, it's more or less whether, whether we think it needs a hole or not to complement one or the other. Okay, so what's the number? What do you need to get to? What do you think? I think that 108 number is pretty key. Uh, Bar I think Barnes ended up at 111. Right around that number there is going to be where it's going to be at. Okay. Well, good luck today. We'll uh, we'll follow you around and we'll catch up with you here in a couple games. Thank you. All right, Ryan, so first couple games, not the greatest out there. What are we going to do different? What happened there in those first few games, and what's the change for the future games? Yeah, the, the back ends are just so crisp. Um, I feel like they're cliffed left to right as well. So I just couldn't control all the friction on the lane and just could not stay out of trouble. Um, the goal, well, besides hoping that they stretch and that they blend a little bit, the goal is going to be to stay firm keep my angles as shallow as I can and, and hope the pins fall.
so we finished the block. Uh, not the greatest block of all, but we made a heck of a comeback there. Bowled a couple of really good games at the end. You were like, what, 100 and 110 under after two or so? Yeah, the 100 under. Yeah. 100 under after two, and so you found your way back to about plus 10. Not good enough, but what's that tell you going into Aurora for next week? Yeah, it tells me I'm still I'm still in it. I physically I'm throwing it good. I just didn't see the lane right a, a couple of games, so it's not a whole lot to worry about. Um, just got to take it with a grain of salt. Um, the pattern did stretch. They did blend out. They got a little bit tamer, and I was able to just bowl and execute. And the only reason I feel like I didn't run the number down is because I didn't I didn't carry. Um, I was throwing it a little too firm. I think to that definitely that definitely hurt the carry, but. I was doing what I had to do to get it to the pocket, and I was just hoping that I could catch a game or two where I bowled monster games. And I went down to one and two and bowled a really, really solid game and bowled 204, and I look back at it, and it could have been 290. Right. So, I mean, just stuff like that where sometimes it, it happens and sometimes it doesn't. But, yeah, it, it even being 100 under the first two, I really think I could have ran the number down and had – things gone my way right yeah i mean it only got to what was it 107, 107 yeah. yeah we were watching the final frames there and ej was sweating he's watching everybody yeah. and the pack he needs you know he needs a spare in the tenth, and then at least seven to tie eight to go eight to move on yeah gets him to 108 he leaves a two seven eight so ej sitting there like oh i got a chance that's not a very makeable spare that's a tough spare the guy goes up and he throws a backup ball to make it and EJ storms out the door and goes and puts a dent in his trailer. And he go, and then Packy comes up and throws six. He throws the exact same shot and gets six, two, four, seven, eight. It's unbelievable. So Packy misses by one, EJ's the number. But everybody runs out to go tell EJ and EJ comes back in. Then he finds out that, oh no, there's another guy that still has a chance to go around him. So then he's freaking out again. And luckily, and he almost rolled a two pin to go around him. Mike Davidson, Mike Davidson needed yep. a, a strike in the 10th to get around him and get to like 110 or, or 110 and uh he almost rolled a two pin to get there and but you know pins know the golden boy was supposed to get in golden so. golden boy is that's there it, again EJ, he's, man. Nothing he's there Nothing he's bad. there have you watched it all this morning to see if he's uh, a little bit um i'm kind of watching the whole field and honestly i'm watching the the two lefties that whacked him yesterday to see what they're doing that i didn't and uh Honestly, there's they're they're looking at the lane the same way I was. I don't know, it must have just been my ball roll and just a matter of matching up and, and your ball seeing the right part of the lane. It just seems to be how it is. If you don't have the right ball in your hand with the right rotation and tilt and all that good jazz, yep. you're in a whole lot of trouble out here trying to strike against these guys. So but you seem to find a way to strike an awful lot with these guys. Uh, or at least last week you did. Struggled a little bit over the last couple of years, but this last week, and, and you did look good for quite a few games yesterday. I think just those first couple of games caught you up a little bit there. Yeah, I mean, everyone's going to pull those bad games. And um, the back six definitely just made me feel like yeah, last week wasn't a fluke and just a matter of just bowling a couple of bad games and have only having eight games to get there is a big deal. So I'm used to you know having two blocks to get there and maybe being able to bowl bad games but these short little little tournaments like this it's tough you can't you can't do that and get away with it so it cost me this week but um you know i'm just moving on yeah so did any what balls look good which ones uh, did you have success with i ended up i mean i tried some reactive after the 140 game but it was the urethanes yeah. uh, it's just i threw the true motion i threw the black hammer uh the purple hammer is actually a little too much and forced me off of it and wanted to get me to to kind of shape it around it right. and i don't know if it's my lack of rev rate slash compared to my ball speed whatever that when i tried to do that even slowing down i couldn't get the purple hammer to shape no right. i can't do that like right. butter from those guys do so i just tried to stay on it and throw the, the weaker ones and let me stay there right so what's the plan when you when you're heading over to aurora we're heading over later today i'm watching sterner we're rooming together so um depending on Depending on how he does and how that goes, we'll, we'll be heading over there some point today. Okay. Well, we'll see you there. Thanks, Ken. Right. Thank you.